Okay. Let's go first to the various types of infrastructure as code tools that we have. We have seen that there are several different tools that are a part of the infrastructure as code family. You have Ansible, you have OpenTofu, Puppet, CloudFormation, Packer, SaltStack, Vagrant, and even Terraform. Although you can possibly make use of any of these tools to design similar solutions, they have all been created to address a very specific goal. Infrastructure as code tools can be broadly classified into three types. Tools such as Ansible, Puppet, and SaltStack are configuration management tools. Then there are tools for server templating. Packer, Vagrant, and Docker fall into this category. And finally, you have infrastructure provisioning tools, and this is where OpenTofu and CloudFormation fall into, as well as Terra. Let's look at these in a bit more detail. Let's quickly go over all of the three types. So, tools such as Ansible, Chef, Puppet, and SaltStack come under the category of configuration management tools. They are most commonly used to install and manage software on existing infrastructure resources, such as servers, database, networking devices, and etc. They maintain a consistent and standard structure of code, which makes it easier to manage and update as it's needed. They are also designed to run on multiple remote resources at once and can be checked into a version control repository to be reused and distributed as needed. Configuration management tools are also idempotent. This means that you can run the code multiple times and every time you run it, it will only make changes that are necessary to bring the environment into the defined state. It would leave anything already in place as is without us having to write any additional code. For example, when we run an Ansible playbook designed to install a specific package on a group of servers, Ansible will check if the software is already present on the server and only install it if it is absent to begin with. Next, let's look at server templating tools. These are tools like Docker, Vagrant, and Packer that can be used to create a custom image of a virtual machine or a container. These images already contain all the required software and dependencies installed on them and for the most part eliminate the need of installing software after a VM or a container is deployed. The most common example for server templated images are VM images such as those offered by osboxes.org, custom AMIs in Amazon AWS, and Docker images on Docker Hub and other container registries. Server templating tools also promote immutable infrastructure, unlike configuration management tools. This means that once the VM or container is deployed, it is designed to remain unchanged. If there are changes to be made to the image, instead of updating the running instance, like in the case of configuration management tools such as Ansible, we update the image and redeploy a new instance using the updated image. Finally, let's take a look at provisioning tools. These are also called orchestration tools and are used to provision infrastructure components using simple declarative code. These infrastructure components can range from servers such as virtual machines, databases, VPCs, subnets, security groups, storage, and just about any services based on the provider we choose. For example, if you want to provision infrastructure in the AWS cloud, CloudFormation is an excellent choice for the infrastructure as code tool. CloudFormation provisioned a visual UI and several templates that makes it easy to develop code. However, bear in mind that it is only supported for the AWS cloud. OpenTofu, on the other hand, is vendor agnostic, or also known as cloud agnostic, and supports hundreds of provider plugins for all major cloud providers that makes it easy and convenient to provision infrastructure in a multi-cloud or a hybrid infrastructure model. Now, keep in mind that we can also make use of configuration management tools to provision infrastructure. For example, we can make use of the EC2 module in Ansible to provision EC2 instances in AWS. And while this can work perfectly for this use case, it is not recommended to use configuration management tools to provision infrastructure, especially when dealing with large infrastructures. Let's see why. 
Ansible uses a procedural approach in performing actions. What this means is that, say we write an Ansible playbook to provision two EC2 instances in AWS. The playbook should specifically contain all steps needed to achieve this. It will create two EC2 instances of type T2 micro with the given AMI image in the CA Central 1 region. The instances will use an SSH key pair called app server and have tags with the key name and value app server. If we run the same playbook as is again, Ansible will follow the actions described in the playbook and create two more EC2 instances, leaving us with four EC2 instances in total. This may not be something that we intended. If the goal is to exactly have two instances of tag name equals app server, then we would need additional parameters to be added to the playbook. Now, if we want to delete these two instances using Ansible, we have to write more code. Because Ansible follows the procedural language approach, every step you want Ansible to carry out must be well-defined within the code. On the contrary, orchestration tools such as OpenTofu and Terraform make use of a declarative approach and were specifically designed for infrastructure provisioning. The playbook file we used for the Ansible example can now be replaced with a simple OpenTofu configuration file, like this one. In this example, we have declared that we need two EC2 instances and OpenTofu will make sure that it creates and maintains exactly two instances when it executes the code. Once the resources are provisioned, if we run tofu apply again, OpenTofu knows that the two instances are already provisioned and no changes are to be applied. This is because OpenTofu, because of its declarative approach, focuses on the end state of the infrastructure and not the steps needed to get there. The data related to every resource provisioned by OpenTofu is stored in a state file. This state file is repeatedly used by OpenTofu to check for drift between the resources in the real world and what is declared in the configuration files. We will go over state management capabilities of OpenTofu later in the course. We can use the built-in OpenTofu commands to destroy resources already declared within our configuration files without having to write more code. So which infrastructure as code should I use in my organization? The reality is that there is no correct answer. Based on what we have seen so far, if the use case is just to deploy resources on AWS Cloud alone, Using the built-in CloudFormation service may be the easiest to get started. However, if the requirements are to provision resources on a multi-cloud or a hybrid environment, OpenTofu would be an excellent tool. To make the best use of all infrastructure as code tools at our disposal, it is recommended to play to their strengths. For example, Use OpenTofu for provisioning resources and then make use of configuration management tools for post-provisioning tasks, for example. Use OpenTofu for provisioning resources and then make use of configuration management tools for post-provisioning tasks such as installing and configuring software on the resources. 